Well, hello, everybody. And this is just incredible. There are three, three surviving pictures of Stonehenge from the Middle Ages, uh, which is unbelievable. And we can look at what Stonehenge used to look like in the Middle Ages. And I'm telling you now, something ain't right. Stonehenge has changed since then. It's changed. And not only do we have the pictures, we have the descriptions. The first description is from Henry of Huntington. It's about the same time as another description. But Henry the Hunting, Henry of Huntington, he says, he was a, a chronicler. He says Stonehenge was made to look like gateways on top of gateways. And what does that mean? That means, I don't know, I suppose it means it looks something like, it looks something like this in Arken, Arken Cathedral. It's gateways on top of gateways. And Stonehenge looks nothing like this. And uh, several authors have compared Arken to Stonehenge. They say it's about the same size. This is from Charlemagne's time. It could have been built on top of a Stonehenge. And it, it's absolutely remarkable. And, and I just want to show you that, that now. Um, this is, um, this is, um, uh, this is Ar- the Arken Cathedral Dome. And if we superimpose it upon a... Uh, a, a picture of restored Stonehenge, which was uh, this is Inigo Jones basically uh, restored Stonehenge. This is his book, Stonehenge restored by Inigo Jones Esquire, architect general to the late King. That refers to King Henry VIII. And this is his restored Stonehenge. He's he's added an extra trilithon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it's a bit different. Just pretend that's not there. And, and he he he's assumed the horseshoe was once actually a circle, but it is so similar to Aachen Cathedral, uh, except this is, this is octagonal, this is hexagonal, uh, but the, the similarities are, are so, uh, they're, they're so incredibly similar. It's as if to suggest Stonehenge was a dome of sorts, which is, um, which is just interesting. I, I've mentioned that in other videos too. Now, the next picture is, sorry, uh, getting back to this time. At this time, we also had uh, a man, Geoffrey of Monmouth, and he said Stonehenge is a beautiful circle. He says it's a circle, but we're going to get to some information in a moment which shows it could have been a rectangle. So, Geoffrey of Monmouth said this circle was built by giants who came from Ireland. This illustration is from the Romance of Brute, Brute being uh, a man who uh, led his armies to take over Britain, and he said it's only ruled by giants, let's take over. In about 1200 BC, he was probably one of the sea peoples who went to Britain. Everywhere was being conquered by different migrating sea peoples who they all swapped their countries around and, and took over each other's countries. And while they were busy taking over someone else's country, guess what? Someone took over their country. And so that's what happened in 1200 BC, and, and the giants fled. But the legend has always been that giants built Stonehenge in Ireland. That's been the legend. And it was brought over by Merlin, by Merlin's art. And, and th- that's, um, that's what this, this uh, book says. This is a, 14, a, sorry, a 1300s picture based on an 1100s uh, story, The Romance of Brute. Now, I, I have to show you this. Um, it's a bit of a complex video. Sorry about that. But uh, I just have to show you this because it's so interesting. This is that Libyan Stonehenge I keep showing you in other videos. And it looks like it's gone, uh, unfortunately. It's just, it's just gone. Uh, I, I did look for it on Google Earth. You can look too if you want. You just look for where it is in this book. I think it gives an approximate location. Uh, the Stonehenge represented one at, to, to, uh, one at Mesa. I think it, it, it's, uh, yeah, there we go. The megalithic grip at Mesa. So have a look around there. And if you can find this, uh, that'll be amazing. But please don't go to, to Libya to look for it because it's dangerous there. Okay. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, stick to Google Earth or satellites or whatever. But this was a rectangle. So how did they know? In the Middle Ages... When they, when this was written, this was in a book called Ladder of the World, written by another monk. All the chronicles back then were written by monks because there was no middle class. The whole history was written by monks. The only other thing that got written was letters and poetry and official, official letters of things to do by the Normans. And that was done in Anglo-Norman. The monks chose Latin. Here it says, uh, of Hibernia, um, that's it's Ireland, Stonehenge. I can only read a few words. It's um, in in this year, uh, and that, that could be the the next entry. Um, and anyway, it says uh, Stonehenge, Uxter, it's close to Amesbury in Anglia, and yeah, it, it, it's amazing. It's showing that 
even a thousand years ago, there was no other city closer to Stonehenge than Amesbury. Amesbury was the main one. Amesbury ain't that close. It ain't that close to Stonehenge. So even back then, the Stonehenge city, or the city next to it, was destroyed. But why? Why build it like this? Why, why draw it like this? Sorry. What's going on? It's on a grassy plain. He even put the green, green grass for Salisbury Plain here. Why does it have to look like this? Why is it rectangular? Has he got his information mixed up? What's going on? What's going on in his head? Why did he happen to make it the same as this? Another Stonehenge built by the giants in Libya. The giants from Africa. What's going on? And there's another one, which is more obscure, which uh, you might not find in the Stonehenge books. The other two I remember as a child reading in books about Stonehenge. And this quite clearly shows the part of the, the, the Trithalon inner circle, much as it looks today, though this picture is from 100 years after the last picture. This is from the 1400s. It's very different. And then, of course, after this era, it wasn't monks anymore writing about Stonehenge as an afterthought. It was people even writing books about Stonehenge. People like Inigo Jones, uh, his books were published. Uh, there was a new middle class, and the middle class wiped out the Middle Ages. It changed the whole structure, and it ushered in the modern world. Middle class people had free time to do what they wanted. It wasn't just uh, you know, the archetypal inbred nobles uh, having a good time, but it was middle class, rich middle class people, and they, they, were, they were smart. They started learning. And they invented the modern education system. Guys, thank you so much.